Hey folks, my name is Promise, and welcome to more Farthest Frontier in our settlement of Enyaliten. Not gonna lie, just had a little bit of a heart attack moment because I loaded up the game, and what did I find? A big black screen of nothingness. Not what you want to see when you're starting up a new recording session. Fortunately, it looks like a second reload has solved the problem. Hopefully it stays that way. We'll find out. All right, so as of the last video, I think we're really starting to come into our own here. Our population is growing rapidly. We're struggling a little bit on food because of that, but otherwise, I think we're doing okay. Most of our resources are chugging along very nicely. There are a few exceptions, though, mainly things like stone, iron, herbs, etc. Things we're having a lot of trouble finding in the plains, and that's where we are relying on our trade which for the most part is working out okay, right? I mean, we're trying to produce a lot of useful resources like a couple hundred clothes and stuff like that. If we can find someone willing to pay a good price, we can make a lot of cash that away. Keep trying to buy what we're missing, and then hopefully we are going to rock it to prosperity. What is this, by the way? The Shard of Markovian's Blade. Soldiers and guards do 15% more damage. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. It's too bad it's 4,000 freaking gold, but okay. Good to know that exists. Our next major milestone is obviously going to be upgrading our town center to tier four. For that, I need a whopping 400 population. We need more than twice what I've got right now. Yikes. And 25 large houses. It's very expensive. Yeah, this is not going to be happening anytime soon. This is going to be a very slow-going process. That's fine, though. There's plenty more for us to do in Tier 3, whether that's going to be the glass, bricks, uh, paper mill, books. I don't even know what you need to do with books. I don't think this was a thing the last time I played this game, but we're going to find out. So we're going to be sitting here for a little while. Also, I do want to start thinking about our defenses and where to place down some walls so we're not in as much risk when the raiders do come by because they're already proving to be very, very annoying. If I had been smart, what I would have done is left a little bit of a gap between some housing and some farms so I could put the walls between them and leave the farms outside and have a much smaller space to defend, but I did not do that. And I don't feel like moving all my fields. That is not gonna be a small process. So we're probably gonna have to wall all of this off and it's gonna be very expensive and I feel silly about it, but it is what it is. Also, I need to think about how we're gonna get up to 400 population, yeesh. I mean, another neighborhood's getting built up over here already. That'll get me a chunk of the way, but I feel like we need to have a third marketplace. Where to do that, though? We have a lot of space over here. I can make this work. But it's nowhere near my temple and where I'm going to place down a theater. Which means I'd have to build a second one of each of these at some point. I'm okay with doing that with the temple if we get more relics, but the theater, why? Whereas, if I change my plans here, we could actually consider placing down a third marketplace in this area... And this actually would work. Yeah, this might be the way to go. I'll have to build a bit further east than I was planning, but I mean like, yeah, I, I think this is the right way to do it. Okay, I'm committing now. We're gonna go ahead and place down a marketplace in this general area. Let's go ahead and pause that for now and just kind of leave it there so I remember where it's going to be. Then we can go ahead and use some placeholder walls and kind of plot out what my eventual walls are going to look like. I think we'll use a bit more industrial space up over here in this corner, and this entire area down here will also end up turning into an industrial hub. Eventually, we want to move all of the hunter's cabins and the forger shacks outside of the walls. And the good news is that's actually really easy to do because some of these buildings, you can actually just, you know, relocate them. It doesn't actually cost you any resources, just a little bit of time. And then, boom, they're somewhere else. So they're very portable. I also need to gather up all the stone I can in a few other spots. There's some big rocks over here, which will be helpful when I want to start building up my walls. Because, yeah, we really don't have a lot. I believe we did find an infinite stone source somewhere, though, at some point. Eh, I found the clay over there. There's a lot more sand over there. We'll find it. If I recall correctly, it's out here somewhere. There it is. So this will solve our problems eventually. Iron is the real kicker. That's the one that sucks. Oh, let's also make sure we turn on our pub, because we can do that now. I'm producing plenty of beer using honey and wheat, which honey might be a little bit weird, but I guess it kind of makes sense. You got to give some sugar to the uh, proper, what is it, enzymes, bacteria, something inside of the alcohol that actually converts the sugar into alcohol. So that's what you're looking for there. But over at the pub, we should be able to start generating a little bit of extra tax income simply by virtue of making all of our people very drunk. As long as they don't get violent, that's going to be fine. So, okay, this could be a nice little amenity we can add into our population. 
We are getting a little bit full in some of our storage here, by the way. The stockyard's almost full. Coal. We're not even using that right now. Not really. Uh, we can fix this a little bit, though. If I were to place down a quick brickyard over here, that would use up coal and clay and start getting me a new resource that I'm going to need. So, sure, this seems fine. Placing it next to the field where the cows eventually will be located probably seems a little bit cruel in some way. But it's fine. I'm not subject to any sort of US FDA regulations here, okay? It's d don't even worry about it. You can barely even taste the soot in the milk. I am concerned about how much money we're currently bleeding. Uh, let's see, the healer's house, no surprise there. Soldier training and guard training. Yeah, what I can do is probably turn off a few of these towers, because right now they are costing me a good chunk of gold. So I can get rid of some of this, and that would be fine. Soldiers, there's not much I can do about that one. In fact, if anything, we're actually getting them at a discount right now, thanks to the relic that I found in the last video, which is reducing their upkeep by 30%. Not great, but you know, not a bad thing, I suppose. I'd like to get a lot more soldiers, but I don't think we're gonna have that luxury for a little while, not until I'm making a lot more money than this. We have a pretty good number of laborers to go around right now, though. That does feel pretty good. Um, do I want more farmers? I mean, we could do that. I don't know. I feel like there's probably other stuff we really need. I kind of want to have this many laborers just so we can go ahead and extract all the stone and stuff. What other resources might we be lacking? Well, let's see. We're doing really well on things like honey. Probably don't need to make a ton of sand. We should set a quota here. Make sure we don't go over that. Got a lot of hay at the moment. My flax is fine. We got a fair bit of wheat to go around. It's really just things like food, I think. And then, yeah, maybe just more usable items, more trade goods. Well, the bricks are up at least, so that's good. We'll have a couple of people work here. Take that coal, take that clay, make bricks. Another winter come and gone, year 22 begins. Dude, we're having a really good time of it so far. Considering I've got pitiful defenses, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised we're holding out as well as we are. By the way, I just want to take this opportunity to say a very big thank you to a lot of you guys who have been supporting me through this series so far. It always means a lot to me. I, I do put a lot of effort into making the videos that I work on. It's not necessarily like trend setting on YouTube, right? I don't follow the meta. I just play the games that I want to play in a way that I think is kind of respectful to the medium and not trying to go for memes and stuff, right? Not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just not my style. So it does mean a lot to me when people do show up and actually like what I work on. Actually, that's the best thing for me. There are a lot of ways to support the channel, there really are, but best thing you can do, just show up, watch the video, be happy, enjoy what I make. That's what I like doing, I hope you guys enjoy it too, so thank you all. Really does mean a lot. And Raiders are on the way. Okay, I was feeling really grateful. Now I'm feeling uh, a little bit less so. That's not your fault, beautiful viewers. Everything's, uh, yeah, no, this is just the game saying, oh, you're happy? No, don't be happy, be sad. This is what I get. This is what I get for opening my mouth. It's my own dang fault. All right, well, we do have soldiers we can mobilize. Uh, I'd like to place them maybe close to a tower over here because this is the least defended. I've got good reason to believe that the enemies are going to make a beeline for things like my vault, but that's where I have a bunch of towers. As long as they get here with bows, we'll be okay, I think. Over here, a bit less so. Oh, we can upgrade our root cellars, by the way. Oh, it takes bricks. Of course it does. Hmm, great. Looks like we're just starting to see them. What is this? Did you guys bring a freaking battering ram? Holy crap, they brought a battering ram! Dude, did any of your scouts report that my walls are, like, almost non-existent? What the heck are you guys doing? Well, my people are fleeing and retreating, which is good. Um, I did not expect these raider thieves to get up here. Why are they all tending the fields? Oh, for frick's sake. All right, flag the combat area this way, please. Deal with the raiders. I really don't care about the battering ra Fine, go ahead and destroy it. It's trying to knock down one of my houses or something. Now they're running away. They can't even steal anything. What a useless ram. Eh, whatever. All right, so they're up over here. They're getting shot in mass. My people are running around in a panic. We have nowhere near enough places to garrison all of my people. You know? They can all retreat as much as they want to, but, like, <laughs> if they're running and panicking in the streets and not taking cover, this is how the raiders kill them. We did lose a couple of soldiers, by the way, looks like. Of course we did. Because, you know, why have armed soldiers? They'll just get themselves killed. This is why tower defense is the name of the game. Ugh, whatever. 
Hey, cows! All right, somebody finally brought some cows. I need a lot more gold. Well, how would you feel about buying a lot of clothing in exchange for those cows? Also, maybe buy some leftover beer. I've got some wonderful arts and crafts projects you might enjoy. A villager has died. A building was destroyed. Wait, what's going on? Oh, for frick's sake. There's one more raider hanging out. Are you serious? Really? Now he's just attacking like random little homes and stuff. One guy decided to hang out and just be a jerk. Great. Whatever, I finally got my cows. I'm gonna select my barn, confirm. There's plenty of fodder to go around, I think. They're hungry. Ah, they'll be fine. Just turn them out to pasture. Why is the music still going? Oh, for frick's sake, there's gotta be another one. What a, why, why? There's a whole bunch more? We got a third wave? I don't know what happened with this raid, to be honest. This one was just confusing to me. People just like took forever to go anywhere and do anything. Also, who destroys a coal mine? Usually you guys just knock these things down to half health and then you get bored. But not this time. No, they wanted to watch the world burn. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade our Fletcher because we should be able to unlock some new item recipes using this and also get some more people producing more arrows and stuff. We've actually run out in several locations, including for all of our hunters. Might be a good idea to get myself some crossbows. Five villagers killed, one building destroyed. Yeah, it was 34 raiders this time, oh gosh. I am pretty sure that this game does follow uh, basically the RimWorld rules, where as you build up your wealth and prosperity, the game naturally gets harder. I don't know if it just builds up automatically. Maybe there's a bit of a component there, but I'm pretty sure the more uh, powerful you are, the richer you are, just the worse it's gonna be. Always. All right, the Fletcher's up and are running. And fortunately to get a crossbow, which I believe is an objectively better weapon in this game. It does take iron bars, not to mention the planks. Yeah, nothing we can do with these for a while, so really all I did just now is get myself a couple of extra workers so we could work a bit faster. Which is still nice, don't get me wrong, it's okay. I need to get myself a glass maker. Uh, this is a big stinky building. Also, it takes uh, heavy uh, tools in order to work. Well, that mm, sucks. Kinda makes sense, but it still sucks. Um, hmm. Yeah, I need to keep this very far away from housing. Shouldn't be a problem to do that, honestly. I think we're okay. But that does mean that I need to, you know, do some more trading. Oh my gosh. Frickin' heck, and now someone shows up with cows that are half the price, less than half the price of what I just paid. <sighs> okay, well, you know what? Why not? Let's just go ahead and buy a couple more. Frick's sake, I hate you so much. <sighs> Would it be worth buying the Tusk of the Autumn Boar, by the way? Shields and hide coats provide more armor. Good for frontline soldiers. Good for defending against animal attacks, by the way. Our people do wear hide coats and it provides a certain level of protection. Is this worthwhile or do we want to hold out for a better relic later on? I'll bet you we could hold on for something better. This may be greedy. I fully acknowledge that maybe this is a horrible mistake and I should just take the bird in the hand versus the two in the bush. But I'm, I'm feeling lucky. Well, not really, but maybe a little bit later. Starting to produce a bit of milk here, by the way. Okay, so that's coming through. Not sure why they're allowed to eat my grain, by the way. We have an absolute ton of hay. Like, I have more hay than I have any idea what to do with, and they're using my grain? That makes so little sense, it hurts. Who let this cow out? Who let the cow out? Moo. Moo, 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 uh, that's dumb, I'm sorry. I, I feel bad about that one. It's fine though, the point is, why are you wasting my grain? No, we need to get some cheese up though. I will betcha people would like a little bit of cheese. And cheese doesn't exactly spoil as quickly either, does it? 75 bricks to build though. Cheesums, dude. Do you think I'm just made of freaking bricks? I'm not. We are unfortunately reaching this really unpleasant stage of the game where my population has grown so large we are consuming a lot of my products before I can sell them. Yeah, that does suck. We're using up candles too quickly. We're using up our clothing too quickly. I had a lot of this not that long ago, but it's been draining away. 
Uh, but I don't have enough leftover workers to actually start building up new production buildings and keep building upon our current industry and kind of expand it a bit more, right? So we're kind of stuck here. These are the growing pains that I feel like we're going to hit every time you hit around 200 population. We had this issue actually the last time I played the game where there does come a point where it's almost impossible to sustain a very large population because the sheer amount of resources needed and the sheer amount of travel time actually makes it so inefficient, you have diminishing returns on your population, you can't sustain them very easily. I'm not saying we're at that point yet, I don't even think we're close to that point yet, but we are starting to see a bit of a slowdown in a few different ways. And uh, overconsumption is definitely going to be one of them. Kinda wish we could tell people to stop using up all my stuff. Daddy needs his gold. I mean, we do make, like, almost uh, 1,200 gold ingots per year just from taxes, which is good. Like, at some point, you want to have a large enough tax base that you don't need to rely on trade in order to actually make your money, right? That'd be great. But we're nowhere near that point either. Another wave of immigrants hits. That's going to be another 15 or so people. Cool. Uh, we better start getting some more housing up and running and quick, huh? And a drought immediately follows. Gosh dang, I just, I so regret playing in the plains. They're just so needlessly mean and unforgiving. Ugh. I am gonna try constructing a furniture workshop in addition to everything else. We don't have any heavy tools, so I'll need to buy some of those, but uh, furniture wouldn't be a bad idea. See, one thing to remember is it's okay, kind of, that I'm going to be starting to run out of trade goods like candles and stuff like that. The larger the population grows, the more it's going to consume. But it's not a total waste. Because if you look up here at our money generation, luxuries do actually make us some amount of money. So the more of those we have, candles, pottery, etc., technically the more tax income I get. I'm not going to say that it's better than trade. I kind of suspect that it's not. But at least there's a silver lining, kind of. Gosh, I really wish this game did have a times four or times five speed, by the way. I feel like I would actually enjoy it more. I don't know. Maybe I've just been spoiled on too many other games. It is entirely possible. I've actually been playing some uh, very high profile games like, let's say, Manor Lords or Frostpunk 2 lately. If you have not seen that video, I would recommend you go check those out. That person just died and this one's next on the menu, boys. Don't run from the wolf. It can smell your fear. Anyway, in comparison to those games, though, you do start to appreciate a bit more about what Farthest Frontier does well, right? You know, for example, I think crop rotations are done better in this game than they are in several others, like Manor Lords, for example. The production chains are far more elaborate, though I do think the appeal, the visual appeal of some of those other games are a bit better than this, so I don't know. It is nice to get around and play a lot of different kinds of games, right? I think some people really do just get stuck on playing one game and one game only, and all other games will never succeed in comparison to this one game I love so much, right? I'm not saying anyone here is saying that about Farthest Frontier. You guys are generally pretty cool, but you get the idea. I don't know. Variety is how you learn to start appreciating all the different strategies and the different ideas that the different game development studios have, right? I don't know. That's just at least that's how I think about it. It's one of the reasons I can justify playing a wide variety of games. Oh, hang on. Atka of the Iron Clan would like to buy my beer, and with that money, I could buy the Shard of Makovian's Blade. 15% more damage is so good. We're buying it, dang it! I want the relic! That might be a terrible plan, I have no idea, and I don't care. I'm doing it anyway, dang it. Let's assign another priest so that unlocks another slot. Shard of the Markovian Blade, bada boom. Relic spirituality bonus plus 100%. Absolutely. It looks like the Shards of Narsal, doesn't it? Kinda. Anyway, with both of those relics, not only can I have cheaper soldiers and stuff, but now they do more damage. That's gotta be a good thing. We have our furniture workshop. Um, I don't feel like we'd strictly need to be making furniture. That's something that gets into, what is it, the tier 3 house or something like that? Yeah, there we go. You give that to them, that's where you start getting all the extra gold. Um, glassware would do something kind of similar. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> All right, I don't feel like I need to devote too many people onto this, but of course, let's make sure we have some production limits so I don't overconsume all of my planks. Oh, and it looks like we are making cheese, by the way. Excellent, all right. So that is gonna be some food with a bit of extra longevity to it. We've got some proper dairy, folks. Rejoice. And our glassworks is ready to go as well. Okay. So this guy is gonna take some coal and some sand and turn them directly into glassware. That seems like a pretty easy way of making some money as well. Sand is not that difficult for me to come by right now. Charcoal either. 
So we actually could produce an absolute ton of these. Only downside is, of course, like many other buildings, if they use heavy tools, they will gradually start losing their durability. At least some of them will. So um, that means we'll have to replace it periodically. But we should actually be able to make them ourselves at some point. I feel like that's a tier 4 building, but somewhere is the ability to do that. Oh wait, no, it's just a blacksmith's forge. Oh, okay. So as long as we have a lot of iron bars, we actually could do this ourselves now. Well, that's good. More raiders on the way. We should probably enable my towers again, because I do tend to disable them to try and save a bit of money. Looks like they're gonna be coming from a couple of different directions this time around. Oh boy. I don't know how well we are prepared for this, but uh, sure, let's, let's give it another go. <sighs> I wonder how many are gonna linger this time, you know? That was really fun last time, how the guy just sort of stuck around for 10 minutes and kept killing things and I couldn't do anything about it. That was really fun. And here they come, unsurprisingly. We should probably go ahead and ring those bells and warn people to get inside their homes, right? That'd be the smart thing to do. Wow, that is a lot of raiders running through here, though. It's almost as if they have intimate knowledge of my town, by the way. They know exactly where they want to go. Right over here to the vault, where I have a lot of towers waiting. It's instant death. Well, not instant, but it's very much death. Oh, good, and now my military units are dying. Because they're so useful, aren't they? Yep, they're all dead. Okay. If you don't have a large enough army, I just have decided that they're useless. It's better to have a whole bunch of towers and then just let them run into their own death. Case in point, these guys have killed my soldiers, sure, but they're not gonna be able to do almost anything beyond that. There, they're all gone. Bye. On the plus side, I no longer have to pay any more uh, salaries. That That's good, right? Kind of? Honestly, I wouldn't fault you for thinking that I'm a terrible military commander. Not exactly making a good showing there, but to be honest, the raiders are such a nuisance and not really that much of a threat. That like, I don't know, do I really feel like I need to invest every bit of my time and resources into walls right now, or can we just maintain the status quo? Oh, however, we did find a raider encampment, okay. Now see, I did not know that was over- first off, who went over here? Why did a villager wander up the- I have no idea. But we found a raider camp. Okay. No, really though, why did you go that way? Jeez. So we'll have to destroy that, because that is one place where the raiders are able to spawn. I can upgrade my markets? Woo, we should consider doing that. Extra workers, more income, larger work areas, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yes. Yes, this seems good. I would like to make extra income. I want to tax these people for all that they are worth. By the way, I did spend some time reworking all of my crops. So now we have proper crop rotation and that they all kind of follow the same template. No more hodgepodge. And also, I intentionally rearranged a few things because I was getting really tired of things like my peas dying to heat stress. So now I've moved them to being either at the beginning of the growing season or the end, but they should not be growing ever during summer. Hopefully this means that I will have more consistent food. Whoop, and mine is out of ore. There goes all my clay. All right, that's actually a small problem. Um, because that means I'm not gonna get any more bricks, and I know we had a infinite clay deposit, but it is deep. And the only way we're gonna get a deep deposit is if I'm at tier four, so we can get a special deep clay mine. So until I get to a point where I can do the great upgrade, which I can't for a while still, that's gonna be a small problem. We now need to buy all of our clay. Mm -mm -mm. Not happy about that. Oh, this also means I can't even build my theater. That's unfortunate. I was actually trying to save up for this right about now, so I could try to get a desirability boost for almost the entirety of the city. But now I don't even get to do that. Ah, this is why we can't have nice things. Because I settled in the gosh dang plains! Oh, thankfully, somebody is coming by with some clay. Okay. We're gonna buy about as much of this as I can afford, which at the moment is not a lot. We need to make some more money. Oh, you'll buy a lot of beer. I love you. Thank you. All right. So this at least takes care of my clay issues for a bit. In that case, let's go ahead and enable construction of the theater now before it's too late. We'll make sure we use all that clay in the right spot. Good lord, something just got struck by lightning. I would say this is great because it's right next to the well, but apparently we've been using up all of our water here too. Yeah, actually a lot of my wells have been running dry lately. We need to start getting some upgrades here pretty soon. I also really do want to upgrade our saw pit. Because we are not making our planks nearly fast enough anymore. And I've got an extra heavy tool sitting around, so we've got some bricks for now. So let's go ahead and boost this up because that lets me upgrade a lot of other things. 
There we go, that looks a lot better. Okay, now we're making use of heavy tools. We can even assign a couple extra people over here. Do need to be cautious I don't overconsume my logs, but there are ways of making that easier. For example, we could upgrade this work camp, which again cost me some valuable bricks, but would effectively turn this into a forester's hut, which means we can actually plant down trees. Which, um, considering that was something that people complained about in the game for a while, it turns out there is a way around that. So I'm glad they added that into the game. That's great. I say they, as if I actually know who they are. I know the name of the development studio, but I've never met them in person. That said, on the off chance they're watching this video, hi, how you doing? I love your game. It's great. Thank you. Whoa, why do I have 40 laborers all of a sudden? I think a whole load of children just grew up out of nowhere. Ah, oh, children, they do grow up so fast, don't they? My little man, by the way, is almost one years old. He just hit 11 months, just a few little bit ago. And he took his first steps on his own, unassisted, as of today. Really crazy. Feels like that just went by in the blink of an eye. That's one of those little things where I'm pretty sure none of you guys actually care, and I don't blame you, but I don't know, I'm proud of it. Hey, the theater is built, okay. So with this thing set up, entertainment now goes around to, it looks like pretty much the entirety of my town. Well, ain't that just fine and nifty. It does cost me 30 gold per month, which is a little on the expensive side, so that sucks. But you know, okay, cool. Yeah, happiness can go way, way up. If only that translated into more money, I'd be a lot happier. Oh, crap, and here comes Raiders again. <sighs> okay, slowly working on walls. Not that it matters all that much. Where are they all coming from? Are they all coming from this one direction? certainly seems that they're all coming from the same direction. <sighs> of course. Well, oh, and they're actually already here. Oh, well, that's going to be a small issue. Um, hopefully, they don't all make a beeline for this tower. At least a handful of them are. Right, let's go ahead and ring the bell. Hopefully, they are stupid and go for the vault as they usually do. As long as this tower doesn't get destroyed, and it looks like it barely is going to survive. Like, three or four of them break off to attack towers, but as long as there's two people in there... Looks like they're able to wound them enough that it's not an issue. Oh yeah, look at them try to go for the vault. Look at them once again trying so very hard. Bless their hearts. Yes, bless their arrow-ridden hearts. Oh well, that was easy enough. All right, well, tell you what, let's do one last thing before I end this video. I wanna go ahead and upgrade our trading post. Why? Because it's going to bring better traders, in theory. More specialized traders. I don't know if the prices will be better, probably not, but I mean, you never know, we might get some good stuff. Also, it's another one of the prerequisites in order to upgrade Anyalitin to Tier 4, which is going to get me those deep mines that I want. Quarries, as well as clay pits. So I really want to work my way up to that. We're still a ways off, though, unfortunately. I do need to have more large houses, which we're getting there with the desirability up. You know, we're doing that. But 400 population, still a long way to go. And my food production is barely skating by still. We're not overproducing, but we're not underproducing either. I don't know. 400 population, man. There's still a lot more that we need to do for that to become viable, but okay. Ah, there we go. Okay, so the trading center is up and running. Now, I seem to remember in the very beginning release of the game, if you upgraded this thing, it actually broke all traders. <laughs> Right, I probably should have thought of that ahead of time. So hopefully that does not happen here. If it does, I'm a gonna be a very sad boy. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and get ourselves a blacksmith so I can make myself heavy tools and so on. We are planting a whole mess more fields down here since I've got a lot of workers to spare. So we can bump ourselves up to about 65 farmers in total, and hopefully this means we're going to have very sustainable food going forward. The theater is built, the trade center is upgraded, I just need another 126 people, and I need to boost up that desirability a bit more. If we can do that, we are ready for tier 4. 5,000 gold though, oh boy, that is going to be a hard sell for me. Thank you all very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, I would ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.